Well, well, well. It seems to me that we're getting to some spicy, spicy meatballs content right now. Charlie Kirk apparently calls out John Piper about Donald Trump's statements. All right, I'll give you my beginning and take on this. Okay, before we get into this, I haven't listened to any John Piper. I only know who Charlie Kirk is in this whole video, but I will say that I've only heard good things about John Piper. Okay, he, apparently he's good and sound doctrine. That, that's what I've heard. I've heard a lot of people say only good, positive things about him. So I, I don't know about this, but I do know that Charlie Kirk knows his politics and his Christian faith. And then he just doesn't just believe in whatever he wants to believe. He actually does a good dive into history. He doesn't just fall for things or look at the top five suggestions on Google and go like, that's the answer. Okay. So it's interesting. I've only heard good things about John Piper. So let's see, let's talk about this. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just know a lot of like theologians, they, they, they reference John Piper a lot. So it'd be interesting. I, this is it. This is interesting. This is new to me. So let's get into it. So my statement was the following. You cannot say you believe in biblical principles and vote for the principles of the Democrat Party. They're incongruent. They do not fit. And that's not what, I'll, I'll address John Piper. I agree with that too. I think who you vote for should align with your belief system. And maybe back then the lines were kind of blurry and like, you know, all that stuff. Okay, well nowadays it's this side or that side. Like you can see the difference between the two parties. You see very, very anti-border, let everybody in. Um, you shouldn't have walls, illegals, illegals. Uh, it just anti-God, that's one big thing. Anti-God, anti-Christian versus we need a country that has law and order, borders. We need to go back to our fundamental beliefs and we need to push God back into school versus we need to take God out of school, okay? So there's obviously a huge difference between both sides. So what does this have to do with John Piper? I don't know, but I do believe that voting has should align with your core beliefs in, in, in Christ. If Christ spoke against it and you're voting for someone who spoke for it that that's an issue that's an issue okay and if i had the vote between no borders and no more abortions i would vote for the person no more abortions no i know you agree so I, i'm going to address the john piper thing because i disagree with what he said but my position is this but what do you if say you're though? a born again christian by the fruit you will know them and yes. the fruit is that i will cast my ballot for a party that had gretchen whitmer and gavin newsom and Eric Adams and Joe Biden spend more wording and video time on Easter Sunday talking about trans rights than the resurrection of our Lord and Savior that yes. supports the massacring of children via trans and also abortion, that you cannot be a Christian and vote for that. Now, John B Piper did not say he was voting Democrat. So I want to make this very clear. God spoke very clear on how he viewed on children. His view on children is very, very clear, very strict. And the punishment to cause a child to stumble, yeah. So I agree with that. If one party says you can mutilate your children and the other party says you shouldn't, by your core beliefs in Christianity and who Jesus is and how he spoke about children, who would you actually vote for? And if you voted for the Democratic Party that says you should be able to mutilate your children and put them on puberty blockers and all that stuff, and it's a, it's a right that they have to choose for themselves, I, I disagree. Because also in biblical principle, you have the unit of a family, family unit, okay? Husband, wife, children. If you're if you're going against that and you're saying the parents have no right for their children, um, yeah, that's a problem. And you see that politically too. Democrats say that you should be able to hide this information from the parents. That's an unbiblical stance. So again, I, I agree. Whatever party you vote for shows your core values. He doesn't even fall into what I'm, I'm talking about. So let's talk about John Piper. What John Piper is saying is that I believe abortion is wrong. Okay. I believe that the transing of kids is wrong. I believe all this okay. sort of stuff. But I think Donald Trump is this unrepentant sinner. And I would say, John, Mr. Piper, what do you have to do with the story of Samson? Should he be in the hall of faith in Hebrews? According to our own scriptures, it says that Samson is in the righteous hall of faith. Oh, you know the story about I see. Samson? I see where he's going sort with this. Similar to Trump. God came to Samson while he was in the bed with a prostitute. Samson took the jaw of a donkey and killed 400 Philistines. He wasn't exactly your perfect mold, but God used him for a purpose. And I would ask John Piper, can God use broken, sinful vessels for his purpose? He used King Cyrus to bring God's chosen people after the first exile for the reconstruction of the second temple. 
And the question for John Piper, he says, I remain baffled. Well, you shouldn't remain baffled, Mr. Piper, because the people that are Trump supporters that are Christians, they know Donald Trump's faults. They could recite them back to you, just like they know their own faults. But he also has virtues. And I never hear the virtues ever articulated from people like John Piper. I like what he's saying so far, okay? Um, I like that so far. So he's pushing the same kind of argument, you know, one one thing, he's, he's going back to scripture and he's applying scripture against John Piper, saying, well, we see a, a good pattern coming here, you know, unworthy men, sinful people being used by God to do his will. Okay, why can't he do the same thing with Trump? You know, I, I like this so far. They know Donald Trump's faults. They could recite them back to you, just like they know their own faults. I like but that. he also has virtues. And I never hear the virtues ever articulated from people like John Piper. What are the Ooh. virtues? He's awfully courageous. Would you keep on fighting? So what he's saying is John Piper only points out the bad things about Donald Trump. He always points out the negative things about Donald Trump. That's funny because as a Christian, you actually learn. And when you read the New Testament, you learn actually that it's always the good things that are mentioned before you correct. Okay. In the New Testament, we read all the time when they went to the other cities and the nations and the churches, they would point out the good things that they do, but then they would go into the bad things. But if you start on the bad things, it's like, oh, you're putting them down. Here are the good things that you do. Let me help you do better because here's here's the places that you fall short. But if I come to someone and says, you're doing all of this bad things and blah, 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 this and that, that's how you can improve. Okay, but what about the good things that I do? It doesn't matter. So how do I know that any of the bad things that I, uh, like, how do I know that that everything that I'm doing right now, if it's good or bad, according to you, should I go and fix what I'm doing? Tell me what I'm doing good so I, I, I don't focus on that, but I focus on the main problem at, at stake right now. So you always start off with the good so they know, okay, I don't have to deal with that. We're doing good in that, that side. And then go into the bad, okay, so this is good. This is what I need to work on, okay? And coming from personal experience, that's, that's also what I'm dealing with. People saying that, you know, you're dealing with this and you need to fix that, but they won't tell me what I'm good at or what I'm good at right now. It's like, yeah, you got all of this to fix, but that that's it and then you know we can talk more okay well I, I i don't understand because what am i doing wrong though what am i doing right what how do i know if what i'm doing right is actually wrong or unbiblical do, be more specific you know tell me what i'm doing right so i can put that aside and say okay that's that's fine but tell me what i'm doing wrong and then give me a biblical answer to why it's wrong and then also help me figure that out getting if you're facing 700 years in federal prison time and your family's business empire is at risk of being taken from you, would you keep on running for office and keep on fighting if everything you've done is in front of you? I don't know if I would. Secondly, his love of country, I think, is unparalleled, unprecedented. Finally, he was conflating a policy agenda with personality. He says a president is not only personality or policy, but it's also personality. But policy is far more important than personality. I'll prove it to you. If you turn off your TV and you tune out of all the media, Mm -hmm. Will you still be impacted by the president? Yes, by his policy. And so the question for John Piper is, you're watching way too much okay. mainstream media. You're being infected way too much about a man that I don't think you even know. But can you acknowledge that Donald Trump delivered three Supreme Court justices and gave us the overturn of Roe versus Wade? If we voted the way that John Piper... And you'll be very, and you'll be very surprised how many churches want to keep out of that whole topic of Roe versus Wade, okay? They don't want to even get involved with the topic of abortion. All right, so we do this thing here in Venice called the March of Life, okay? And we do this every year. I went to it about maybe two, three years ago. Time flies, so I don't really remember. But I went to it and all the churches were involved. There was all the churches. There was like 10 different churches involved from Venice involved with the March of Life that was, you know promoting you know and giving to this charitable fund that was going to help people with problems or that don't want their children to have their children so they can help them take care of it or give them the financial needs diapers whatever they need to have this child they they're here for them the past couple of years where are the churches i went to the past one and one church showed up one pastor of the church showed up and that was the church of the nazarene the pastor of that church the majority of the people that were volunteering there and marching there were from that church i saw only a few 
couple, maybe three, four people from my church there. That's a shame. That's that. That's honestly a shame. Churches are straying away from politics because it's divisive and they want to keep the peace and blah, blah, blah. If you're not preaching about it and you're not exposing the evil that happens, how are you going to keep the peace? By telling people to sit there and not talk about it and resolve it, fight for your right and fight for what is good and righteous and keep it holy? No, 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 no. We don't want to talk about it because we don't want to cause division. Truth and peace brings division. Why? Because while we live in peace and truth, there's going to be those who hate it because they're chaos and liars. So if we don't stand up for it, then the liars and cheaters will take over and there will be no more peace. So blessed are the peacemakers, go and tell people about the gospel. Go and get involved in politics. Put your Christian values into action. Do not just sit there because you feel like you're going to offend somebody, which is the opposite of being a peacemaker. If you're out there to cause trouble, then you're no longer a peacemaker. If you're out there to share the truth and what is good and holy and righteous, you're not causing division. You are the peacemaker. Wanted, or let's just say embrace that belief system in 2016, we would have had Jezebel, I mean, uh, Hillary Clinton, um, as Jezebel? Jezebel? We're about to say Jezebel. System in 2016, we would have had Jezebel, I mean, uh, Hillary Clinton, um, as president, and we never would have repealed Roe versus Wade. The embassy would not have been moved to Jerusalem. We wouldn't have had peace in the Middle East. I could go on. I think we proved that the tr first Trump presidency, flawed man, excellent policy, fulfilling his promises. I don't think any Trump supporter you know, is is necessarily in disagreement with what I would have said. I'm baffled by John Piper, an alleged humble, fervent, dedicated Bible teacher that can be indifferent to a million abortions a year, 100,000 kids on hormone blockers, a wide open border, Dang. destruction of Western society, Dang. race hatred, defunding the police, rising crime, the downfall of Minneapolis's hometown, and him preaching about Donald Trump's personality. Wow. Wow, that that's not exactly a good look on a well respected, you know, pastor right there. That's not I, I got to hear that again. Dedicated Bible teacher that can be indifferent to a million abortions a year, 100,000 kids on hormone blockers, a wide open border, the destruction of Western society, race hatred, defunding the police, rising crime, the downfall of Minneapolis's hometown and him preaching about Donald Trump's personality. It's on you, John Piper, to explain yourself. Dang. This is why I respect Charlie Kirk is because he will call out the church. He will call it out when there is absolute hypocrisy being shown. Keep doing that, Charlie, because that, that's what I respect out of him. I respect people that call out the hypocrisy because I think people who call out the hypocrisy are peacemakers because they get rid of the lies. Whenever I hear anything negative about the guy, it is that he's a liar right? He's selfish. He's prideful. He's boastful, right? He's all this. You know what? When you read the Bible, like what Charlie Kirk is saying about Samson, when you read the Bible, you hear about people like that, that God used to accomplish his purposes. Check this out. Now I will give you all your countries into the hands of my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I will make even the wild animals subject to him. And he made a giant statue that people had to worship. I mean, this dude was going to kill all of his officials and his counselors and his wise men if they could not tell him what his dream was. Kind of sounds like communism today. Oh wait, it is. They have to affirm everything of the dictator. And if you don't, you're dead or you go to concentration camps sounds like a narcissist too and what it meant i mean this dude was on another level of crazy if you will but it almost sounded like john piper was allowing a license for people who were christian to be democrat but guys more and more come on more and more as we see the landscape right? yep. as more and more as we see both sides yeah yeah i mean i think it's becoming quite clear it's what i'm saying it, it, it is exactly what I'm saying, bro. Bro, you are on the spot right there. It's no longer blurred lines where we can come together and figure stuff out and achieve the same goal for little things. No, it's completely two different goals now. Ah, jeez, dude. Right on spot, right on spot. I, I like to hear that. Look, I'm not trying to get all political. I wouldn't say I'm a Republican just because I don't even want to have a label. The only label I want to have is Christian, maybe husband, maybe father, right? Husband, father, brother, these things. It's the kind of like when people say, oh, what party are you? I'm just a Bible-believing Christian. But like, what, are you conservative? 
I'm a Bible believing Christian. So you lean more towards Trump. I'm a Bible believing Christian. That's it. I base everything off of my biblical standards. What's wrong with that? I mean, I think you can base off your votes, base off love God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I think if you were to vote based on that, yeah. Even those two laws that Christ said, these two commandments, all the laws and commandments come down to these two. The Democrat party are the complete opposite. Christian, right? I mean, I don't want to be known as a Republican, but here's the thing, guys. When I look at both sides, mm -hmm. more and more and more, I'm seeing the other side, right? The Democrat side turning to some satanic stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? Killing babies, allowing this whole transgender confusion to just go out of control, right? Maybe even going against Israel and different things like this. Oh, yeah. There's certain things that that side is doing that seems to be totally against the Bible. And then people would say, but the Republicans though, right? I mean, they don't want to let people into the country and they want it, da, da, da. My goodness, when people say, oh, borders, God's against borders. Dude, look at Nehemiah. Just read the book of Nehemiah. Building the wall to protect his own people from the surrounding pagan nations that were wanting to destroy them. Who wants to destroy America? The communists and the Chinese. I shouldn't say the Chinese, but the CCP, the Communist Party, okay? Socialists want to destroy America. America. Communists, money lovers want to destroy America. Drug addicts want to kill your children. Traffickers want to take your children. An open open border literally means that all these people's problems come pouring into your country without you having any say of it. Politics is nothing more but just legislated morality. Everything affects you and your family and how you worship God. Everything does. And if you have one side that says allow drug addicts to be in your, your country, pour into your country, to pour in drugs that are illegal and killing hundreds of thousands of Americans, allow rapists and pedophiles and groomers and traffickers to come and kidnap more of the children. That's a moral issue. What do I say about it? Stop it. How do you stop it? By creating a border, by creating a law and having order and not chaos. Even in the Old Testament, they would build the temple. They would build the little walls. They would say only a certain amount of people are allowed to be in here. Certain people are allowed to be in here. The high priest can be in here. Civilians can be in here, but you can't be in here and blah, 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 and this and that. They had rules. They had laws. So what does that say? God has order, not chaos. God has borders for I give this land to you. Oh, this land? Oh, okay, so there's a border. So I give this land to him. Oh, that land? Okay, there's a border. And the very fact that scripture talks about how we should not cross over our neighbor's line is pro-border. When you look at clear-cut issues like the birth of a child, like the baby. I mean, the Bible's pretty clear about how God loves babies and God loves little children. So, I mean, right then and there, you got one side. And, and here, here's the thing about that also, because, because people are obviously going to make that argument, well, God doesn't care about women and children because, you know, he wiped out full civilization. Let's talk about the pagan nations really quick because I want to talk about this. Um, and this is only going to take a minute because I'm not going to go into, into depth with this. The nations back then in the Old Testament when God said completely destroy these nations and et cetera and blah, blah, blah. God gave them enough time, enough time for the women and children to leave. Now, the children, I do believe, are innocent and the women there were being used because back then women were used as objects, obviously. But God gave them enough time to leave that place, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Gave them enough time. If there's holy people there, he wouldn't destroy it. Why? Because there's good people there. And the very fact that he didn't just destroy Sodom and Gomorrah right away proves that there was enough time for the good people to get out. And he, that's what he did. He went in and got what? The only good people in there out. That was it. So he gave enough time for the, the pagans, for the women and the children to get out. Because the majority of people that were causing the most damage and evil and committing the acts were the men. So the women and children had enough time to get out. So when God destroyed those nations, I do not believe that those children went to hell or are in hell. I do believe that God is fair, just, and knows their heart. And because they are children, and incapable of making right decisions and are still being brought up and let's just say this they were highly being manipulated into believing evil things as children so god understands that so i do not believe that god sent them to hell so so wait in 2020 the election i would get but disagree with john piper desiring god saying he cannot vote for trump due to morality or biden during due to worldview and cowardice but if this is a statement that he believes you could positively promote the worldview 
professed by Harris. How, how, how would you know? Like, if you haven't had a conversation with Donald Trump or somebody, whatever, that's running for a political position, how would you not know if that person is unrepented if you haven't talked to them or asked them that question okay so and if there are videos of people asking him that question and donald trump says um you know i regret it then send him to me you know i would like to see but if he hasn't ever talked about you know him repenting or whatever how would you know okay so all these acts and everything they destroy persons and through persons they destroy nations so so what he believes is this stuff here is what corrupts a nation and the last five years bear vivid witness to this infection at almost every level of society. Now he's talking about the 2020 election, not the 2020 election, the 2016 through the 2020. I, I agree with Charlie Kirk on this. If Charlie Kirk would do a sit down with John Piper and talk to him about politics and Christianity, that would be a video that I think would be mind blowingly amazing. Charlie Kirk talking to John Piper. Oh, what a video that would be. What a podcast that would be. Maybe that needs to happen.